Good morning to all of you west of the Atlantic. Good afternoon or evening to those of us east of the Atlantic. And thank you for attending our webinar today. We have received some registrations even from Asia and Australia. So if you happen to watch live from there, we are especially, you are especially welcome because you sacrifice your sleep to participate in this webinar. This webinar is aimed primarily at people interested in electronic reporting who have not yet had the opportunity to research it for or simply did not find good tutorials to start with. I will help you understand the bigger picture of this technology technology and give you starting knowledge to experiment with it yourself. This is the first of four webinars about electronic reporting and configurable business documents. We are also recording this webinar and we'll publish it on our YouTube channel where you can watch it again when you start working with electronic reporting on your own. Uh, if you are experimenting any, experiencing any difficulties with watching this webinar, drop us a note in the chat window and we'll see what we can do. Again, thank you for joining us. Let me give you some information about our upcoming webinars from the configurable business documents in electronic reporting series. We will have two more webinars in December besides this one today. All webinars in December will deal with the standard out of the box functionality. Next webinars will focus on one of the most common questions we hear about configurable business documents, which is how is it possible to modify an existing report by adding additional data without programming? On December 12th, we will go through the process of reusing configurations provided by Microsoft, and then we will add some fields to the report so that uh, such fields that are not included in the Microsoft configurations. We will see what it takes to prepare a data model and a data model mapping configurations. And on December 19, we will continue with the same example. This time we will reuse the Microsoft format configurations and add new fields to the template and to the format configuration and then run it in D365 FO. We will also learn about new print destinations for configurable business documents. At the end, we will discuss the pluses and limitations of this technology. And sometimes in the middle of January, we'll present the preview of the latest and greatest from the Centric research and development related to configurable business documents and how the Centric will enhance them. Allow me now to introduce myself. My name is Albin Lotrich and I will be your presenter today. I have over 30 years of experience in IT, primarily in ERP implementation, software development, IT project management. My role here at the Centric is Senior Technical Consultant for Reporting and Document Output Management. I'm actively involved in following Microsoft's moves in reporting area in D365 FO and improving the Centric solution to fill the gaps and give users a great tool for this new technology. Now, may I say a few words about the Centric? We are soon going to celebrate our first decade of existence. Our products include solutions for reporting and document automation and report design for .NET and for Dynamics AX and 365 FO. We have designed a very powerful add-in for Microsoft Word, which allows you to create templates for all kinds of reporting needs. We are committed to keep users satisfied. Our products are time savers and the Centric is committed to innovation and top quality and our customer enjoy exceptional technical support and customer service. We are highly motivated and agile team and our products and services I hope reflect that. Our feature reach, the Centric AX3 edition is also our contribution to Dynamics 365 community. The Centric is located in Slovenia and since you are coming from all parts of the world, you may be wondering where Slovenia is because Slovenia is a small country and it doesn't get the attention of big world media, which I think is not necessarily so bad. Anyways, I thought that since our participants come from all parts, it would be nice if I would just say a word or two about our country. So where is Slovenia? Here it is. A small but diverse, as you can see from the pictures. You can come from the Alps to the Adriatic Sea in under two hours, enjoying beautiful landscape along the way. In electronic reporting, we talk a lot about mapping, so let's map Slovenia on the globe. You see, Slovenia is in Central Europe. It joined European Union in 2004 and Eurozone in 2007. Our neighbors are Italy, Austria, Hungary, and Croatia and we have a tiny part of Adriatic coast. I hope you didn't mind this refreshment of your geographic knowledge, and I sure hope this will not be the only thing you will remember from today's webinar. Okay, enough kidding. Now it's time to go to the serious stuff. 
we are first going to explain some core concepts of electronic reporting. I will show you several live demos afterwards where we will create some simple electronic reporting configurations from scratch. You will see what it takes to create them and what to pay attention to. At the end, we will test our configurations in Diffrey 65 FO. I expect that we will need approximately 30, 35 minutes for that. At the end, we will have a Q&A session where I will be answering your questions. I'll enter your questions in MS Teams chat window at any time, and our moderator will then edit group and publish them. I'm asking you to enter your name with the question, if that's okay with you, so that we will be able to distinguish between questions, especially if there will be several similar questions, so that we, you will know when we are answering yours. Electronic reporting is a tool that you can use to configure formats for both incoming and outgoing electronic documents to comply with legal requirements of countries or regions. This gives you the flexibility to adopt new regulatory requirements and generate business documents in the required format to electronically exchange information with government bodies, banks and other parties. Report localizations are also done with the help of this tool. An interesting scenario is also creation of custom reports by modifying an existing original report. Now let's see what are the components of electronic reporting. Data model is one of the components. It consists of the actual data model configuration, which is an abstract representation of data structure. It describes specific business domain with enough details according to the needs of the report for this business domain, for example, invoice or purchase order. Model mapping configuration links application data sources to individual elements of the data model. The second component of electronic reporting is the format configuration. Format also includes its data structure, and its mappings to the data model data structure. Format can also contain templates in Excel or Word. This may sound confusing now, but I hope that by the time we will go through the demos, you will be able to connect all these pieces of the puzzle together. Electronic reporting per se has been around for a few years now. Microsoft says that it replaced about 20 different frameworks that were previously dealing with electronic reporting in Diffrey 65 FO. Now it is a single tool for all electronic reporting needs. It was primarily designed for processing outgoing and incoming electronic documents, as you can see on the two images which I borrowed from Microsoft's tutorials. Probably the most interesting usage of electronic reporting is for configurable business documents. Configurable business documents were announced in June 2019. They integrate into electronic reporting by using its configurations, data model, data model mapping, format, format mapping, and the templates, Excel and Word files with placeholders for data. We will go more in details about configurable business documents in the next two webinars in December. Today we are going to talk about electronic reporting basics, which will give us the foundation to build on. The idea behind electronic reporting is to use configurations instead of coding. That means that instead of developers developing requirements in code, functional consultants can set up configurations in electronic reporting to achieve desired reporting results. Microsoft has prepared over 1800 configurations so far and it keeps adding new ones. You can reuse those configurations such as they are, but you will probably also want to create your own configuration provider and derive, which means copy and paste, some existing configurations and modify them according to your needs. To be able to run reports via electronic reporting, you need a data model, a data model mapping and a format. Before we will go to the live demos, we'll take a look at what we have to set up in order to use electronic reporting. First, we need to enable the business document management in the feature management form. Next, we need our own configuration provider because Microsoft configuration provider is there by default, but it doesn't allow any modification. Therefore, we have to add a new one and set it active. I will now set these two settings up in my first demo. The first thing which I'm going to do, I'm going to feature management. And I see all my 
settings here and I will just sort by the date because this is the easiest way to find it. You see, I have my business document management already enabled and here on the lower right part of the screen, you can enable or disable it. So that is already taken care of. Then I go into electronic reporting workspace. I have already made a shortcut, which I am going to be using afterwards. And here I see configuration providers. Microsoft is there by default and I have added the centric configuration provider. And this is the one I have here and here I set it active. So these are requirements which I have to have fulfilled before I can start working. Now we'll go back to our slides again. Now let's talk about our demo scenario today. Our goal for today is to show you what it takes to develop new configurations from scratch. We will be using a fictitious example of an XML payment format, which will be used in accounts receivable for electronic payments to the vendors. I will go for the entire cycle of generating the data model with required data structure, then data model mapping to map our data model structure to the data sources in a database, then format with its data structure of the final XML output file, format mapping of formatting uh, of format and data model data structure to map them together. And finally, we will set up accounts payable to use our new payment file and we'll test our work in accounts payable vendor payments. These demos are based on Microsoft's tutorials for electronic reporting, but these tutorials contain no images and they have very little explanation and in some parts they are incomplete or even inaccurate. It took us quite a bit of experimenting to figure out how to achieve desired results. Anyways, the links here are for the reference so that you will be able to try them yourself. By watching this webinar, you will be much better prepared for that. Since we will create our recordings, uh, sorry, since we will create our configurations from scratch, there will be many boring repetitive tasks. To quickly go over that, we recorded our demo in advance using the task recorder, which is part of standard 365 FO. Task recorder doesn't capture screenshots. It actually records our actions and also our data entries and selections. That allows us to rerun these steps again, which we're going to do today. If you would want to play back these recordings in your environment, you will be able to download them from our blog post after the webinar. The recorded tasks for this demo are contained in five small files, each completing one set of related tasks. Note, however, that your environment has to match ours exactly in order to successfully run these recordings. This is one of the main weaknesses of the task recorder. It is very sensitive and when something is not as it expects, it just stops working or ignores the step and goes on to the next one. Our final result will be an XML file with the structure and the data as you can see on the slide. The purpose of these files is to be sent to our bank to process payments to the vendors. By creating the configurations in electronic reporting, we will determine what data structure this XML file will contain and where it will get its data from. So we'll go step by step. In our first step, we are going to start creating the data model from scratch. We'll create a data structure such as our fictitious bank requires for payment processing. This is how it looks like. And what we're going to see here is we have uh, two root elements here. One is party and the other one is customer credit transfer initiation. Take a look what we have here. We have some reusable structure like our party, which contains substructure. And this substructure will then be applied in the payments information, as you can see. Then we will have the operational data structure where actually data will come when we will run it. And we also have node properties that are giving us information about the selected, currently selected node. Maybe just one note to you. If you will try to run my task recordings in your environment, make sure that you have previously added a new configuration provider named Docentric and set it as active. So that's the same thing I've been showing you before. Task recordings use this configuration provider and will stop running if it won't exist. Now it's the demo time. We're going to do our first data model. What I'm going to do now, first I'm going to call task recorder and I'm going to play back 
my recordings. So this is the first one. My task recorder has already prepared steps which I'm going to go through, and these steps cover everything that is necessary to create a data model. I'm going to play it step by step, so one step at a time, and I will comment what is happening. So the first thing now, we'll just open the, the workspace, and this is where our configurations are placed. So we are going to create new root configuration for the data model, which is called Simplify Payments Model. You see it here on the right, the tasks I executed, and I can see which is the next task, and now I am entering designer. So this is my empty design pane, and I will start adding first the root. So I'll start with the reusable configuration first. Party, I'm adding account. As you can see here, we have item types. Account is of type record. Same thing for our next field, which will be agent. So I'm just entering children and siblings and root nodes, and this way I am creating my structure. Basically what I'm doing now, I'm just setting up a data structure in the form of the tree with hierarchies, with names, with types for particular fields. So there's no big deal here. Okay, now I'm entering my other root which will be my operational structure, which will be called customer credit transfer initiation. And I'll start adding data tree elements to it as well. I'll just quickly go through this because that's all what we have already seen. I'll just stop when we will show how we can reuse existing structures. Okay, now we're going to reuse existing structure. So we are on the creditor in the payments information, and this creditor is going to inherit the party. And in order to do that, I select the creditor, and here is the switch item reference button. And when I do that, this the new forum opens where I will select what I want my reusable structure to be. And here it is. The same thing will happen for the debtor. And that's it, no more tasks. I'm going to stop this recording right now. And let's see what we have created. Going back to the designer again. So this is my structure once again, so that you can take a look and see what happened. You see, I have this asterisk here whenever I have some inherited uh, structure. And you see, where it is. If I want to know, okay, where is exactly is this structure coming from? If I would have lots of elements, I can always go to referenced item and I jump to the item that actually is reused. So this is our operational structure and this is where the data is going to come to. So we can now continue with our slides. We are at step two. So the data model is now in place. The data model mapping will contain information about where the data will come from. Here we will establish bindings between the data structure elements in the data model and their data sources in the application data like database, tables, views, classes, formulas, etc. Our data model mapping designer looks like this. On the right, we can see is our data model. On the left are our data sources. And these data sources can, in our case, we're going to use table records or we will use calculated fields. Of course, you have many other data source types available, but we're going to use this too for today. And then we'll do the bindings, which means we have to find the right element on the left and on the right. That means from in the data source and in the data model, and we bind them together. And this establishes the information which data model will need when it will have to fetch data from the data source. Now we're going to see that in a demo. I'm going to open my next recording, and we'll do the same thing as before. We'll just go step by step. We're going to open the mapping 
information. And then we'll go to the designer. OK, we are already in the designer. This is model mapping designer, and here we'll start adding our data sources. In this case, we're entering ledger journal table. That will be one of the data sources. Unfortunately, see the window here is very limited. You see there's much more information than we can see. This is our data model. And here we have uh, data source types. Where we are picking what we what we need. I'll just go through steps a few more times. Now I'm entering formula. So in the formula, I have functions that I have available and I have data that I have just selected from the data sources. And here in the middle is the formula window. In this case, I'm going to combine two different uh, information into one. I'll still try to. It's smaller. It's not really very, very user friendly right now. But anyway, I'll just play, play this through. OK, so I'm now adding this formula. And I'll just keep playing and I will explain what is going on. Now we're entering another formula for the amount. Because our screening solution is not that high. We have a little bit of the problem displaying it. Uh, we have added another table bank account and now we're entering another table from the data sources, which is for the company information. And now we are already starting to match fields on the left and on the right. You can see in the data model and on the data source, we have to find the matching information and then bind it together. So this is going to run through. It's about 180 steps which are required to, to do this. As you can see, even if we have relatively simple structure, there's quite a bit of work involved. And not just that, given how complex the database information, tables and relations can be, you know, it's very easy to make a mistake and it's then hard to debug and trace down where the mistake was if something, uh, if you get wrong information on your, or even worse, if you don't have any information, even though you know there is somewhere. Good. We have now completed this step and we have data model mapped to the database and we have market as completed the change by changing the status, which means it can be used in the next step which will be creating uh, format mapping later on. OK, so we're good to go to step three and we're turning back to slides. In the format, we will tell what we want as uh, XML and what kind of output we will have in the structure. Note that our data model can be more general. For example, data model could contain superset of electronic payment information required by all banks, whereas individual formats will contain information for only specific banks, meaning not all the data, maybe just a subset of data. Therefore, one data model could be used by several formats. Formats needs to have the data tree structure similar to what we have seen in the data model. And this data structure contains XML elements and XML attributes where the data will come at runtime. In addition to that, each leaf level element, that means each XML element who have no children under it, contain another node which contains the data type information. Again, we are in our demo. This time it is the, the next step. Let's play back our format part. Okay, we'll do the same thing as we did before.
So we are creating a new configuration and we will base this format on data model which we have created earlier. So we have to enter the name, description, we have to tell what is our model version for that and what's the model definition. And then again, we go into designer and we'll do similar steps as we have been doing before. Again, we will first enter the root node. In this case, it will be XML file and we will add elements to this, which will represent data fields. I'll just let it run because this is just repetitive task. So for every element that I enter, I have to enter some properties based on what am I entering. And first we're going to create the data structure and then we will also add data types to each of the XML elements. What is similar to we have been doing with the data model in the beginning. And actually that makes sense because we're going to connect to the data model with this data that we are data structure that we are now creating. Okay, we are now finalizing our data types settings. Okay, and we're done. So we have create we have here about our model, and here we have our format, and we can just quickly stop the execution of our task recorder and we'll see our result in the designer. In the designer, we see this complete structure that we have just created and every piece of information here in the notes has got its properties. Depending what kind of node we click, we have different properties. Okay, so that's already quite a bit. And now let's see what our Mr. Cat is saying. Now, Mr. Cat catnapped a bit. And what did he miss? Well, practically almost half of the fun. Well, I hope the rest of you are still awake and keeping up with me. But we'll see, we'll see that soon because those of you who will still stay connected to the webinar past the end are probably asleep as well. But okay, we don't mind uh, as long as some people live and learn in the sleep. Good, uh, let me show you the, the next step. First on the slides. Okay, we are practically almost there. The last missing part in our configuration is the mapping of the data structure between the data model and the format. There's no rocket science here. We have our structure of um, our format on the left and we have our data model on the right. And again, we have to find the matching parts and connect them by binding them, as you can see here. And this is what we're going to do next, our next slide. Okay, so let's see what it takes. We're going to open our format, which we created before. So this is our structure. We'll now go to the mapping where we have our previous data model structure and we're just finding the right matches and we're binding them. So whenever I bind something, I see this information appearing in my format structure. I'll just let it run to the end. You see, it takes lots of mapping and lots of clicking, but as a matter of fact, you can create the structure such as you want. <clears throat> okay, we're done. And we have also set the status as completed so that we will be able to use it in our D365. I'll stop the execution and let us go back to our slide. Now we have 
created all the configurations needed as far as the electronic reporting is concerned. You have seen how it looks, how it feels, what it takes to do them. Now let's see how to use it practically. We're going to use this in vendor uh, payments, as I said earlier. Uh, before that, we will have to make some modifications. Uh, in the setup of methods of payments. The modifications are such as you can see here on the slide. And afterwards, we're going to go and open the vendor payment journal where we will enter new line and we're going to generate payments and the result should be the XML file. So let's see if it will work. Okay, we're going to go to methods of payments where we're going to change the electronic payments definitions. We're going to change this file formats here and we will tell what kind of format we'll be using. So let's see. This is the format which we have created. Okay, save it. Page. It looks okay. Now let's go to the next step. Now we're going to the vendors. We're and we'll add record here, save it, and then we will open lines of this journal. Enter required information. So we use the account, we use we set the description, we enter the information about the amount. We tell that it's electronic payment, we save it, and we click general generate payments. Set the properties right, which are already okay. And now we will execute this. And the result should be XML file. And we actually see it here. So let's make sure that it is correct. Okay, it looks like everything is there. So the processing date and time message ID, this information which was combined, then the vendor, the payer information, the currency, the amount, everything seems to be okay. So that's it. We have successfully created our first configuration. We have applied it in Differ 65 and everything worked as expected. <clears throat> so we're done, good job. Let us quickly Recapitulate what we have learned today. We became familiar with the concepts, with the data model component, consisting of data model and uh, data model mapping configurations, and also with data format component, including uh, templates and their configurations. We have created electronic reporting configurations from scratch, applied, our new format in Differ 65 FO accounts payable vendor payments. So you now have basic knowledge about electronic reporting to get started with some simple tasks like we did today. Now I still have some housekeeping items to tell. Please don't forget also to register for our next webinars. On December 12th, we will take an existing data model configuration provided by Microsoft and add some data to it, which is not present there yet. We will then also modify the data model mapping and map the new data fields to their data sources in the database. As a result, we will get a functional configuration which will be capable to provide the data to the format configuration, which we will do on December 19. We will modify the format and format mapping, and we will also modify the report template in Excel so that it will contain the new data. We will see how to configure Differ 65 FO to use this new report and what print destination options we have available with configurable business documents. And then in the middle of January 2020, prepare for the icing on the cake because we will demonstrate our preview of the Centric Enhanced Configurable Business Documents. You can follow and like us on LinkedIn and you can watch and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. As I said, we're going to publish this recording on YouTube as well as all other recordings from the consequent webinars. So now it's time for your questions.